the vigil is there for, made up of essentially uh, Uyghurs who uh, fled from Xinjiang. Many of them had already been incarcerated. Many uh, had been sent off to uh, incarceration camps. Uh, so uh, we're joining them because they're they're protesting quite legitimately against the Foreign Office's decision to uh, talk to this man, Erkan Tuniaz, despite the fact that uh, the Americans and some others have actually sanctioned him because he is complicit in the torture and incarceration, slave labor, forced sterilization of Uyghur women and re-education camps for their children. All this is going on to basically eradicate a uh, an ethnic group, uh, the Uyghurs, from China. And the problem has been that the UK, by allowing their foreign office officials to see them, I think gives uh, the Chinese, and particularly this individual, uh, the governor of, of Xinjiang, a uh, essentially a, a, a publicity coup to say that uh, they're, they no longer believe uh, that there is a problem in Xinjiang, even though they will say to him, oh, we'll say in strong terms, we don't approve of what he does. The problem is he already knows that by coming over here and by being seen by them, uh, then he gets uh, a certain amount of uh, publicity, which will be good publicity. And China will say, well, they are the UK hasn't sanctioned us and the UK is prepared to talk to us. And I think that's sending the wrong message. Why is he here? Who invited him? Nobody officially invited him. Uh, but we think uh, that this was uh, organised from the UK, uh, the British Embassy in uh, China, but he was coming over here separately. He's coming over on a diplomatic passport. Now, the diplomatic passport can only, you only have that by right if you are a member of the diplomatic corps. If you come over as not a member of the diplomatic corps, it's up to the UK government or the host government to decide whether they're prepared to give you diplomatic immunity. So they could lift dic diplomatic immunity from him. Uh, there is a request for a court case. So a lot of these uh, the Uyghurs have written to the attorney general saying, will you now allow us to bring a private prosecution? If that's the case, then he'd be detained. And a number of us as members of parliament on all sides of the House have written to the attorney general to say she should do this because this is only fair that the man responsible for this genocide uh, is actually detained in the UK pending a trial. So all of that is what this is all about today, to try and draw attention to the plight of these people, uh, which is getting forgotten, I think, in many countries around the world. But America has sanctioned 10 senior officials in Xinjiang. We've sanctioned four junior officials, that's all. And certainly not this man, nor his boss, original boss, Chen Quanggo, who is the architect of this terrible genocide. Do you hold out any hope that the Attorney General will allow you to do that and make sure Tuniaz is detained? Or is a government that's willing to let Foreign Office officials meet him a government that's not going to, going to accede to that demand? Well, I hope uh, that, first of all, it should be remembered that the Attorney General is not a member of the government. The Attorney General has, by uh, law, to be independent of the government as an advisor to the Cabinet. So uh, she will have to make an independent decision about this and should not talk, discuss or take any views from uh, the government. So therefore, there is a chance that she will look at this and say, I see no reason why he shouldn't now face a prosecution because the evidence is overwhelming of his involvement. Now, I hope she will take that view. It's not my job to tell her what to do, but that is what my hope is. And that's what the hope of many MPs. Uh, who backed the letter that we went uh, wrote to her to support that. But uh, if she does, then, of course, he would be detained, uh, notwithstanding his diplomatic immunity, which could be stripped from him by the government. And just finally, uh, Sarin, Richard Holden, the transport minister, said this morning that it's likely Chinese spy balloons have already flown over Britain as they have uh, over the US. Do you think this is more evidence that Britain may have been too soft on, uh, on the threat from uh, Chinese intelligence? Yeah, I do. I think that the truth is right now is that we're in denial. And my worry about this is that because, you know, the Treasury and others say, oh, don't do anything about this because of Chinese business and we need to have their involvement. We're lagging behind many of our counterparts around the world who, have, who understand that China is a distinct and very, very definite threat, not just to us, but to the way uh, that democracy and free and free speech work. So here's the problem. Right now, there will be goods on the shelves, huge numbers of goods on the shelves in the UK coming via Amazon or whatever uh, that are made by slave labor, 
China uses not just Uyghurs, but they've also got a quarter of a million uh, Tibetans in forced labor camps, and they are making things. Their cotton that they produce, 40% of the world's cotton grown in Xinjiang, is actually a large chunk of it produced under slave labor. So lots of companies are not doing what they're supposed to do. They're not uh, checking their supply chains, and they're not declaring it. And the key thing here should be that we need to change that completely. We need to make it clear that no company should be allowed to bring anything to the UK for sale that has any suspicion of slave labour being involved. And there is a great deal of it right now. Lots of plastic goods on the shelves, etc., made by slave labour in China.